Um, the Lord just let me know. I was getting ready to do a video. Uh, and we've been kind of going over it while I set everything up. First and foremost, I am God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53, who is Moshiach of Isaiah 11. What I'm about to read to you is my proof. I have about 40 videos, 45 videos uh, that come from these two books. And God has me flip them, as I call it, all the time with changes in the details, you know, the information, what's this about, the title, uh, because some people, the title that exists doesn't make them look at the video. Uh, so we'll, we'll do something different. Uh, the videos uh, have now been posted. Now, what I do is I re-download them and re-upload them. So it's pretty much the same video every time, but you get different information, title, and what they call the details. And that is now up to it, more than a thousand. A thousand posting of 40 videos. But it keeps them circulating. See, I'm not a rabbi. I'm not a pastor, a priest. I have nothing to do with Christianity. Uh, and yet I'm a Gentile. You say, well, how can you be a righteous servant Moshe and a Gentile? Well, all you got to do is read Isaiah 63. Who is this coming from Adam? And God says, it is I. And of the peoples, that would be his peoples, the Jewish people, none are with him. Now, Adam is associated with Esau. The brother of Jacob, who became Israel, and Saul married only Gentile women. And all of his descendants are known as Gentiles. And the actual city of Dom was east of the River Jordan, uh, in Jordan, the country Jordan, uh, is where it would be today if it existed. He's coming from Gentile lands, and no Jewish people are with him. Well, when God comes in the day of the Lord, which you find in Malachi 3, he says, I'm coming. To return to my temple. Um, <laughs> so, when he comes from Adam, he's coming from uh, lands of Gentiles. Uh, sometimes uh, it was referred to as Rome, uh, Adam was uh, in the Talmud, and then it was Christian Rome. Uh, Rome uh, obviously fell away, and you left with also a reference to Christianity. But it's two Gentiles in general. And um, I will convert Orthodox. It will be as though I've always been a Jew when we get to Jerusalem. But that is one of the problems I'm having with getting these books published. That, And it really takes Judaism to task. Uh, and God wants to take him to task. He took him to task. That's what his book's about. That and Christianity. And Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord. Which is here, and I was, I'm gonna. It's very easy to see. I, I don't know why uh, these these intelligent rabbis, Jewish people, uh, have such a problem with figuring out when is God coming. I mean, there's nothing to it. But anyway, it's today, and I'll show you why. But uh, you know, he says when he comes, when Moshe acts here, he's going to have a reckoning and dismiss all. Of the rabbis and appoint one shepherd to be a ruler among them a leader it's not a king it's not a kingdom it's not a dynasty all these things ran down just made up none of that's in the scripture and see these things irritate the fire out of God when he's irritated I don't have a good day you know we've been together 13 years now he doesn't leave me uh, he and the angel of his presence, which you never hear Judaism talk about. It's the Holy Spirit. It's in Isaiah 63. <laughs> it's it's kind of hidden in there. It's the only time you hear the phrase, but wherever God's presence is, there's an angel with him. Divine beings, plural. Who did Jacob wrestle with? And then God told him, I'm changing your name to Israel. Who did he wrestle with? He tells us, I wrestled with a man and divine beings. Judaism says, Jacob wrestled with an angel. No. 
if, if the Spirit of God alights and enters upon a man, as they did with Ezekiel, God's there too. God <laughs> alights upon and enters you too, his presence. And he takes over, by the way. Yeah, he takes, he takes full control of everything. Your mind, your thoughts, your words, your physical movements in the cords of his power. Um, it's a pretty amazing thing. But uh, that that's, you know, they just went to a man near Jacob and said, um, Wake up. I'm the God of Israel. I'm the God of this land. I have something for you to do. And you know what you say when God does that? You say, okay, I'm ready. Here I am. Let's go. Because <laughs> you know who it is. I mean, there's no doubt that you're not hearing voices. You, you know who it is. It, it, because he can put knowledge into you and in your mind without speaking. And he can control your emotions so you don't fall to the ground. You say, okay. And they would have told him, go wrestle with that man. And, and, and they assured him, you're going to be safe. My, my power's on you, and I'm going to be coordinating the whole rest of the match. And uh, that's a man of divine things. And that's what I am, because the Spirit of God alighted upon me, pursuant to Isaiah 11, uh, verse 1. And God is in his Spirit. See, I'm in my Spirit, my Spirit is in me. Same with you. Same with God. He created an angel, and for that angel's body, he uses not a human form with wings, but his very spirit. So anyway, those are the divine beings, and Judaism dropped the ball on that. So uh, I think the last video we really did on this was it was the ten fallacies, misbeliefs, and some uh, faulty reasoning uh, in Judaism. The one true religion of Abraham. You know, so at the same time, I'm, I'm hitting it hard and saying you got things wrong. I'm acknowledging that God is the God of Israel. God is the God of the Jewish people. No question about it. That's the problem with getting the books published. Here's the problem with that. I bring two covenants. The covenant of friendship that comes with Moshe. God grants it when his servant David is here. And... Um, Sin forgiveness, Jeremiah, I just mentioned this. And God had me type it such that they don't go into effect until published. And of course, I'm sure I'll be here to tell you the fire of every rabbi, telling them the things that they don't know, and they've been dismissed and aren't going into the school of remembrance and into heaven, unless they start teaching these books. Unless they, and, and, and some rabbis will say, well, wait a minute, I, I don't even have a synagogue or a flock. Uh, you know, I don't teach any of this. I don't teach a false messianic era. There's something you can do. And until Judaism gets straightened out, all rabbis dismiss, 100%. No exceptions. Doesn't matter how much he likes you. You dismiss him, believe me. <laughs> He's harsh, very harsh. So, uh, what I'm going to do, since I, we have like a thousand postings of 40 videos, many with different titles, and this and that, uh, I'm going to go through the addendum attached. It's a summary of every chapter, one after another, uh, in about one paragraph, sometimes two, sometimes three. And it's 25 pages long. So this is probably going to be a two-part video. It's going to be pretty long, but it's also a good way to get familiar with my videos, kind of put them in some kind of structure or an idea. Now, you can find this book at KeithMcCartyMcCarty.wordpress.com, both books. Uh, the second book is called The Life of God's Righteous Servant. I just mentioned that. Uh, and, and, and there you can find the index. And it's also, I put it in the details of, of uh, a couple of the videos. So I'm going to go through that addendum, one after another, um, to put some structure into this. It I mean, it's gotten hard for me to follow. You know, uh, God has me use a motorcycle, uh, the Indian motorcycle, because he knows how much I love him. 
And he said, it's the best thing. You know, I can't put you in a synagogue or a picture of uh, a religious picture of the wall or anything behind you because you're my servant. And uh, you haven't converted. Um, sometimes he tells me, I might not have you convert. I don't really have to. You know why? This is what he told me the other night. He says, look, Abram, who became Abraham, was not a Hebrew. I just called him one. I just decided, Abraham, you're a Hebrew. Abram the Hebrew. He wasn't born Hebrew. It's the first time we ever see the word. Same thing with Mordecai the Jew. There's no, Mordecai has nothing to do with Judah. Okay, he's a Benjamite. And, of course, the bad guy in that story is going after all the Jewish people. And it says Mordecai, uh, the Jew, and his people. So, you know, God says, uh, you know, and then I named Israel, uh, Jacob Israel. And they became Israelites. He says, I can just say it if I want to. <laughs> he said, but it would probably be easier just to have you convert. He said, I'll just call you Keith the Jew. And that's it. <laughs> he says, I'm God. Do anything I want to. He's something else. He's got a great humor. I mean, he, he was making me laugh, but uh, here we go. This is an introduction in uh, the first book, Isaiah 53 in the Day of the Lord. And, and again, God's telling me to type this. These aren't my words. I'm not taking credit for knowing all these things. Because I wouldn't. I was an atheist for 50 years. Never read the Bible. Well, I had nothing to do with, with religious people. And if you read my book on my life, you see why. I'm just one of those people who just went through too many bad times. Um, too, many, um, too many bad times. And I just, just, I don't know. It was in the 70s, and nobody, even when I was a teenager. <coughs> I'm 64 today. Isaiah 53 describes God's righteous servant, a man who has never been identified by fitting all 12 verses. There's actually three more. It starts in Isaiah 52, 13 through 15. There are three more men prophesied to come in a future time who have never been identified so you got the righteous servant of Isaiah 53 and three more men who are God's servant David the shepherd, not a king, Elijah the messenger and recounselor of families, and who clears the way for the Lord to return to his temple, and the prophet like Moses. Now King David, Elijah, and Moses were all righteous men, and they were all servants of God. So we're looking for a guy today that can be identified. And we use Isaiah 53 to do it. Now there's supposed to be four total righteous servants. But we got one description. God sending these three men in the future time must include a description of them. And the sages knew that. They, they put that in the Talmud. They said Moshiach is the righteous servant. They called him the leper scholar because he's crushed with disease. He's familiar with disease, and yet he makes the many righteous by his knowledge. Now, how the Christians just ignore that, I don't know, but I'm going to lay it on them, I can tell you that. I bring his wrath. He passed to him in 51, Isaiah 51, and then my description starts in 52, where he says, I'm passing my, uh, the bowl of my wrath, my cup of reeling uh, from you, my people, to those who told you to get down on the ground and walked all over you. That would be Christianity. They stole your book. Said you didn't know how to read it. It's prophetic of Jesus. Yeah, I don't know how you can get there. But anyway, the long description of God's righteous servant is a description of a man who represents all four. You know, they, they're all known for different things. David, basically, uh, well, as much as anything, getting everything together for the first temple, Solomon's temple, and uh, Elijah, the only man taken to heaven, and God returns him? What's that about? Never heard Judaism talk about it. Well, I have all the answers to that. 
basically means there's nothing about heaven I can't tell you. And there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. The description that is inherently and the implicitly a description of one man with the attributes and capabilities of the descendant of King David, Elijah, and the prophet like Moses. And that's me. Remember, the Spirit of God lights upon me, and God is in him. And now he is controlling. He's the one that taught me all this. Again, atheist for 50 years. Um, and, it, it, you know, no single man could ever do what the rabbis say of the Messianic era. Moshiach can't compel all of Israel to study Torah, follow Torah. You can't, no man can do that. It's not a doable thing. But anyway, I get on them about that. But even what I had to do, just presenting myself to the Jewish people, 